today on Dora Hope, the great mountain peak of scripture. And I can live higher because of the risen sun. My life is fuller because of what God's done. I am complete in Christ. He makes me whole. My protector and Welcome to Door of Hope. Uh, the great mountain peak of Holy Scripture is the fullness of God. And when we look back over Abram, Abraham, and then we think of the Apostle Paul and the disciples and the gospel that was sent out to them, they spoke to many of them slaves, not the wealthy. Not there's Abraham journeying to a land unknown, the promised land. And uh, we think, yes, but how can I do that? That sounds complicated. How can I get to that mountain peak? How can I get there? I like in the Song of Solomon, it's called Mountain of Spices. How do we get to the Mountain of Spices? And we read in Genesis with Abram, and I think there it is. The scripture is so nice and clear, and yet we can't see the forest for the trees. We miss it. But here it is, nice and clear for us. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram, and he said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. So God calls Abraham to just walk before him. And that is that journey of faith. It's a walk. I won't say it's an easy walk, but it's a walk that works. It's successful. And we all keep keeping on. And yet we want to be on the right path. We want to be on the path of righteousness. We want to be on the path where we walk before God and make that mountain peak. It says, the people that know their God shall do great exploits. And really largely, um, it's more than just obedience. It's coming to a place of knowing God. My sheep hear my voice. How many times do we forget that? My sheep hear my voice. We walk before God. And God speaks to Abram, he changes his name. Uh, and he doesn't have an easy journey, and he goofs, goofs it up a few times, but he succeeds. And his name is changed from Abram to Abraham. Walk before me, God says, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. And I will, he promises to never leave us nor forsake us, and he doesn't walk with us because we have it together. And, uh, you know, we have our fellowships and we read holy scriptures, but it takes a lot to have those, that illumination, that guidance of his Holy Spirit to bring those words to life. Remember, uh, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And this is living bread. This is the bread of life. And yet we, it's largely, uh, disregarded, I grew up in, we could have the Bible on the coffee table, but we dare not open it and read it. And then when you get past that hurdle, that you can start reading it, you see that the New Testament uh, isn't a very, it's a New Testament written after the resurrection of Christ, the witnesses, it's um, not many pages. So how could something with that few pages changed my life. It, after all, it's an historical book. It's the account of the death and resurrection of Christ, the early disciples going about and preaching it, preaching the word, but it has much more. It's the language, it teaches us how to walk with God, be alive unto the things of the Spirit, and that brings us to the mountain of spices. I remember being in Jerusalem uh, many, many years ago, and life certainly wasn't easy. I hadn't anticipated uh, the things that I was ticking off with challenges of faith. Um, and I, you know, would 
when people asked me, um, even in the book, The Oil of Joy, that started it all, I left half of it out because, trust me, it'd be too much for you. But I'm there in Jerusalem going forward for prayer. And uh, the Lord spoke uh, through a gentleman, and he said that I would not always live in the valley, but I would leap upon the mountaintop. And that's what Paul is calling, pressing towards the mark of the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. And God wants all of us to walk with him as Abram, walk with him, put our hand in the master's hand. We can't control uh, so very much of what life brings us, but we can put our hand in the master's hand and walk with him. The people that know their God, we walk with him and we will walk through uh, those experiences and we will have that resurrection faith or resurrection life. We will know it. We will know it. We will experience it. We will see God with us. If God before you, if God is with you, nothing can be successfully against you. And so Abraham, and then we see in the book of Acts, the beginning of the church, and the disciples, he encouraged them to, to continue in the faith, saying it is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And after they had appointed elders for them in each church with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. And then they meet again, and it's interesting. God had done for them how he had opened a door of faith for the Gentiles, and they stayed there with them. And then he says, and they reported all that God had done with them. And the believers, they rose up, so they met together and reported the provision, the miracles of God as they were walking with him. And that's Abraham, he's the father of faith. It's not, it's not an old story that's not relevant. Abraham, the father of faith. And I like that account of with Isaac. He is willing to offer Isaac. And the blessing comes upon uh, his people, the nation of Israel, because thou hast not withheld thy only son, because he's willing. And when Isaac's on there, he says, Dad, where's the sacrifice? And he says, don't worry, Isaac. God himself will provide a lamb. And then there is a lamb caught in the thicket and he's taken and Isaac is released and the blessing comes to Abraham. But before he goes up to the mountain, because he knows it's serious business, but he is the father of faith and he says, the lad and I will return. So it's not wishful thinking. It's not wrong to believe that God can deliver us, that God can heal us, that he can make a way for us, uh, that we can be successful that we can do great exploits, that we can, you know, marching to Zion, one beautiful, beautiful Zion, all they that love the Lord, all they let us love God. Love is the soil of the gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his life that we might have life. And in the book of Ephesians, we're built up in the most holy faith. It says in the, um, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And as we read last week, as you being rooted and grounded in love, I pray that you will have the power to comprehend and then he calls in the fourth chapter, I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you've been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And there it is. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and all, and each of us being given a measure of the grace of God. 
empowered by God's Holy Spirit to live this journey here that is not easy, but uh, relying on the manifestation of his spirit, his deliverance. And it has nothing to do with the soul or the body, uh, not repeating something again and again. Though, you know, if that's what you do, it's nothing wrong with it, but it's greater that it's the power of the Holy Spirit being strengthened with might by the power of the Holy Spirit to be overcome, to be overcomers, to walk in that newness of life. And it's better telt and there's a mountain of spices waiting for us. We will not always be in the valley. We will not always, um, you know, yes, there's challenges, but, uh, you know, I think what, what happens is something cements that we begin to know our God, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. So these holy scriptures guide us, uh, and every jot and tittle matters, every line. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's given to us to guide us as we live. In him we live and move and have our being. And uh, I'd suggest man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It's always a good idea to read it each and every day. And uh, Bible commentaries have changed my world. Uh, the men and women that have spent their lifetime uh, discovering and uh, uh, giving that living bread to us all that we might um, learn of him, come learn of me for I am meek and lowly, and I will give you rest for your soul. In the book of Timothy, Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer, will be persecuted, but wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that were able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. For all scripture is inspired of God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may, may be proficient, equipped for every good work. And once uh, a lady was talking about the scriptures needing to be rewritten, updated, so to speak. And I, we've read that it's not possible. It's all inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I remember saying to her, well, have you read them? And her reply was no, but you know, she heard a little bit that it was supposedly outdated. And we hear that it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, and we want to walk with God. We want to line up to it. Jude, the very precious uh, last letter before Revelation. See, the Lord is coming. But you, beloved, must remember the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. For they said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers, indulging their own ungodly lusts. It is these worldly people, devoid of the Spirit, who are causing divisions. But you, beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on some who are wavering. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. And have mercy on still others with fear, hating even the tunic that defile by their bodies. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling, and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever and ever and ever. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We are not walking in darkness. We have the light the life of God, the life of his Holy Spirit, the fullness of God, uh, the, great, the greatest thing that can ever happen to us, uh, that we walk and live in his presence 
and glorify his holy name and know him, know him in a personal and a deeper way and know his life, know his resurrection life in our being, in our path, in our bodies by the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. Lord, we praise you together. We thank you for life in you, for the great mountain peak, the fullness of God, life in you. And we thank you that you have not chosen, we've not chosen you, but you have chosen us since the beginning of time. And we come before you, Lord, with fullness and joy. As Paul chose, Lord, to sing your praises from the prison, the disciples, they laid hold of it. They knew your fullness and joy. And may all of us step out of our small little world to a larger world, which is Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, our Lord and our Savior. And we praise you and thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen. again. Today on Door of Hope, we are talking about the place of Scripture and the fullness of God. That wonderful revelation of all that God has done throughout the Scriptures. And as Rhonda said, beginning with Abram and the revelation of that 
all the way through to the words of the Apostle Paul. I think if you did an overview of Scripture, really there are two themes that come through. The first is the theme of creation and goodness, as it says at the beginning of Genesis. God created the heavens and the earth. God rested on the seventh day, and what God saw was good. But then there is that message of redemption. And we see it throughout the Hebrew Scriptures and even before there is uh, the murder of Cain by Abel. There is the Tower of Babel where the people try to be like God. There is Israel falling away from the law. And then you look at the ministry of Jesus encounters so many people where sin has just wreaked havoc in their lives. And so in addition to the beauty of creation, there is that message of redemption of being brought back to the fullness of life, of knowing indeed that in Jesus we are called to more, what we sometimes call life in abundance. So I don't think you can look at the fullness of God without recognizing that there is brokenness around us. And within that brokenness, there is challenges to our existence. And at a very basic question, one of the questions that gets asked well, if God is good and God is everywhere, how can bad things happen or how can evil exist? And there's been a lot of reflection and thought about this. There's a wonderful book written by a rabbi which is called, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? And I don't know if he actually ever answers the question, but what he does speak very clearly about is the impact of choice and how negative choice wreaks disturbance within our life. But we know that bad things that happen to us are not always because of the choices we make. Sometimes they're beyond us, they're beyond our existence, and we just happen to feel a great impact because of them. And so when I come to the answer of this, I like to turn again to that great theologian, Karl Barth, who really discuss this. And what he did was break out evil from what he calls the shadow side of life. And so for evil for Bart, and Bart, remember, he was a 20th century theologian. He stood up against the Nazis. He faced evil in his day in a way that many of us cannot imagine. But he said that evil really is the Nile. And that word Nile or Nile is really at the root of nihilism, but that idea of that nothingness. And he goes to the beginning of creation, which we opened up and spoke about. And it says in the beginning, uh, the chaos, the waters, the nothingness was pushed aside and God created the heavens and the earth. So he makes a distinction between the goodness and the greatness of God and of what creation is from that nothingness and from that evil and from that darkness which exists outside of God. One of the things that Bark is unable to accept, and I don't think we should be able to accept, is that God puts up with evil or that there is a place for evil within creation. And so in some ways he's calling it the flip side or the absence or the opposite of creation where that evil exists. And if you look at Scripture, this is consistent with the witness of Scripture because it speaks about Christ being the victor over evil. We have not totally manifested it yet or seen all of its reality, but there is this understanding that one day there will be a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem where evil is vanquished and is no more, and what is good has triumphed. I guess we have this sense that indeed evil is just temporary within our existence and Jesus does more than just look after us and our lives, but he is the victor who triumphs over evil once and for all. But then there is what Bart also calls the shadow side of creation, failure, grief loss, and even death. And there's a bit of a paradox here because we know that 
Aging is horrible. Sickness is awful. Seeing someone die is heartbreaking, but it's not evil in and of itself. There is a sense that death is the gateway to life eternal. Even Paul in his writings talks about that tension between living in the here and now and living in eternity in right relationship with our Creator and our Maker. And so we have this sense that there is evil, but there's also that shadow side of our existence, a shadow side which we see very much revealed in the passion of Jesus. Jesus would not have been who he was unless he had suffered, died, and was buried before rising again. And if you look at the Gospels themselves, Jesus speaks so many times about this before it happens. And one of the lines in Mark's Gospel is that, you will need to take up your cross and follow me. It's not an abundance gospel or a preaching of prosperity, but understanding at a deeper level that shadow side of creation, where indeed we are called to be a people that say no to evil, but are also a people called to pick up and carry our cross. Thank you, Darcy. How great it is to walk with God, to walk as Abraham walked in newness of life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we are here to pray with you. Let's pray powerfully. Let's pray with that anointing and that conviction uh, that God can meet your need, hallelujah, and that you can be free. He said, I would that you would prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers, hallelujah. Thanks be to Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great week. Be on the mountaintop for a change. And I do ask for your support that we can keep keeping on and take care. The beauty of Jesus is always around me. I see his wonderful work in the surrounding beauty. We trust this program has been a door of hope for you, and we encourage you to call the prayer line. Door of Hope is entirely viewer-supported. It is your financial gifts that allow us to remain on the air. All gifts payable to Rhonda Lazert Ministries are tax-deductible. For more information on Rhonda Lazert Ministries, or to order one of Rhonda's books or steal CDs, please call 905 901-2048 or visit us on the web at doorofhope.ca Our mailing address is Rhonda Lazert Ministries Post Office Box 67 Lakeshore West Oakville, Ontario L6K 0A3 Join us for the experience of a lifetime Whether you've been before this is your first time there is nothing like experiencing the land where Jesus lived. Join Rhonda and Darcy from April 14th to 27th, 2023. Call or email for more information. And his never-ending mercy.